I can't remember if I remembered to say this in the intro, but it's really important that you know that I'm really thankful of all the donations and my new patrons and everybody supporting me and uh, how it really, it means, like it really means a lot. Just wanted to let you know again. I'm gonna keep on letting you know, you know. <laughs> Welcome back to my garage. So last time we, uh, we found yet another leak in the patchwork that is my uh, PIP cylinder. And uh, we made a decision to start fresh, make a new cylinder. But what kind of cylinder? Because um, if, I, if I were to, like we're not, like you got to remember this started out as a uh, as a 100% of bore, you can't see that here, but there's no exhaust bridge. It's uh, the exhaust port is half the bore, single port. So that that's what this started out as. That's really the reason I started like casting my own cylinders because I wanted that kind of a port and uh, with the with better transfer geometry than uh, what you can find on most cylinders, at least what you used to be able to find. And with these special pistons. Thank you Mark Atkinson again for making these. So they're special two-part pistons with a with a captive ring design. The ring pin is actually sitting in the middle of the exhaust port and there's uh, in this design which well, this caused the stress riser and the, the rings broke but uh, the ring is restrained from moving too far. Like it's, uh, the whole concept is that the ring is able to move enough to seal, enough, enough to seal, but uh, not enough to snag on the 100% of bore exhaust port. So that's the theory behind it. And, and so that's the whole reason for, for making my own cylinders. The whole purpose of the super wide single port is to have more exhaust area because uh, the limiting factor in uh, if everything else is perfect in a two stroke in conventional two stroke engine the limiting factor will be the uh, exhaust area the specific time area of the exhaust especially the blow down so that's the that was a possible way forward in two strokes in conventional two strokes if i so we're not using that idea anymore in this because this needs to be uh, properly developed in in uh, isolation to make it work without any because that's my problem I started out with so many variables so many because it wasn't only the cylinder with the 100% of bore exhaust port it was also the super high case volume to rely only on the pipe and then the then two intakes, one primary and one secondary, and the secondary was a valveless resonant intake. There's so many things going on at the same time. And uh, as we've learned, slowly learned throughout the years, even though I really appreciate the free jazz approach, it doesn't produce results. Lots of learning and lots of things I should have learned from, but uh, lots of fun. The journey has been great and still is great. What I'm... <laughs> what I'm talking about here is that uh, if we leave all of this out of the cylinder and cast a new one with a, with a traditional three port design and a, a duct that looks like uh, a traditional three duct design and, uh, and now as we've established that the, the transfer angles should be very much close to what you typically see on uh, like this this isn't better a hook in the transfers is actually it seems better than just uh, like having it not bend in two planes I've talked about this before <laughs> so again what I'm talking about is that casting a new cylinder with the three port design with more with typical transfers it would just be copying something that we already know is a good design like is that what i want to do is what i'm uh, what i'm thinking uh, thinking about because uh well I, 
I don't think that's what I want to do. That's not my... My strength doesn't lie in doing stuff like that. I... That's not what I... I, I need to do something actually like... I'm not the best engineer and I'm not the most knowledgeable in two strokes really. What I am, what I think my strength is, is the outside of the box coming from somewhere else than most other people working with two strokes. And my, my very special way of, uh, my, my weird way of thinking maybe, which makes Because we have all this, like the brute force concept, the, like it started out like this. A very special design with a, with a transfers just as high as the exhaust port and reed valves in the transfers and a rotary exhaust valve and a supercharger. And this produced very good results, I think. But then again, my dyno was experimental and uh, really difficult to decipher if the numbers were good but we were we saw like 20 horsepower from 7000 to 13 13000 rpm with this and then we started like wondering what the limiting factors were and i thought it was exhaust area and uh we end up here with uh, with two rotary drum valves now without the read transfers with just a symmetrical transfer layout and also a symmetrical exhaust layout and but this we, we never got to uh, properly test the testing of this because just a couple like a short run and then the chain drive bound up and uh, and that was it then we went into the supercharging the PIP engine and that whole adventure there so so I like do I want to I don't think I want to like make a conventional two-stroke engine and make that work. I feel like that's there's so many people doing exactly that. And uh, without all the experimental things, there's n really no reason to 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 build something like that for me at least. And and many people will be like, oh, I just want that to happen. But uh, I don't think you really want that to happen because you can see that everywhere else. I think you want the experimental. I think you, you want some of the free jazz. But uh, now with new insights in, uh, and um, a better approach and not, as, like, not that much chaos. And, uh, and with pauses in between to think before operations are performed to avoid stupid mistakes and all that stuff. This is a lot of talk in the beginning of a video. I need to think a little bit about this, where I want to go next. If I want to like continue on with the brute force concept and, uh, and see how that works. Or if I want to go the conventional two-stroke route but then there's not really any point in casting a cylinder because I could just, I could buy something that would be very, very similar to what I would cast if I were to cast something without the special exhaust port and stuff. And then we would just be trying what everybody else is trying to get as much power as possible out of something completely conventional. And where's the fun in that? While thinking about that, this week, while spending some time thinking about this, where to go now. There's still a possibility to seal up that exhaust port, because it's leaking here. The duct. What I can do is drill, and I can't really reach the leaky area. And I don't want to, like, I could gouge the floor here and then apply some JB weld, but I don't think it will last. Like, there's JB weld here still, even though this has been running with this for quite a bit. So the JB weld will survive exhaust gases for, uh, for a period of time at least. But I really should patch it from the outside. And what I can do is drill a hole here and probably on the other side too. And then create a fillet of JB weld on the 
in the water jacket on the outside of the exhaust duct and that should seal this up and then even though and at least we can get some testing of the brake dyno and maybe we're like and see what happens see how much uh, power this produces even though the exhaust duct is uh, is like a, a single duct but then bridges and uh, not optimal I think while thinking about what where to go now let's do that and uh, and get the uh, and have something running and just to do some like for fun for yeah <laughs> let's drill some holes here Now there's proper access to the leaky areas. We're now sitting here after the the second attempt off camera to seal the exhaust duct floor and uh, with JB Weld and it's still not sealed and uh, after some testing with uh, with fluid there's even there's leaks everywhere like there's small bubbles coming from everywhere so uh, the plan was to give this uh, a last shot uh, to like use it for uh, for dyno calibration and stuff. No, no, I can't be bothered uh, with the <laughs> with with the leaks. I'm gonna show you why. Even with the 100% of bore exhaust port, even with that, this was kind of not doomed but would would have required lots and lots of uh, iterations before we could get anything more powerful than uh, like without just being lucky more powerful than the current state of the art two stroke engines and how the same thing applies now without the 100% of bore exhaust part but then there's really just a small chance of making more power than what what's already been done and I'll show you why. Here's a typical two-stroke exhaust port layout with a main port and two auxiliary exhaust ports and ducts. And then you can see the transfers here. So the 100% of bore exhaust port idea was pretty much like this, even though my floor started out much, uh, much higher. You can see that there's 
extra area here not taken up by bridges so more exhaust port area and more importantly more blowdown area which is the area before the transfers open so this extra area is what would allow the cylinder to make more power than anything else if everything was perfect it would be a balancing act between how much transfer area we could achieve and then balance with the extra exhaust port area so we uh, could possibly allow us to to raise the transfers but then there's my transfer design which looks uh, pretty much like this but with a much higher exhaust port floor i uh i would be able to and I did to some extent widen the A port and have the angle more steeply pointed rearwards. And because that was pointed more rearwards, I thought it would be a good idea to point this angle a little bit more towards the exhaust port to counteract the extra push from here. And this gained me lots of area. Like playing around with this can gain you lots of area. And this means you can further like lower the transfer ports and then you'll gain even more blowdown area and and like there's potential here for uh, for lots of power the problem well there's one problem with this uh, like single port design and that is the duct looks like this so a normal duct would look like this and i have a suspicion this doesn't flow as well as this because there's like there's this whole area volume open as soon as the port opens versus with a three port design where there's separate ducts i think maybe velocity would suffer and i did play around with that and make it really narrow and tight and and probably trouble with skin friction and what i'm trying to say here is that the potential for this to work better than anything else is there but to reach that better the approach would have to be a bunch of iterations like make that 100% uh, of more single port work and then start playing with the the transfer geometry start playing with the the port floor playing with the with the angles of the transfer ports and and all the time matching up the areas to and see what's better and stuff and and that's like that's we're talking like casting hundreds of cylinders probably at least tens and tens of cylinders trying different iterations maybe in the future maybe when i've got that uh, metal 3d printer where i can print several cylinders a day maybe then and uh and with a plating setup uh constantly running and stuff the brute force concept engine which is a supercharged externally scavenged two-stroke engine with uh, one or more rotary exhaust valves and various uh, and we tried various uh, port layouts one with reed valves in the reeds no <laughs> reed valves in the transfers and transfer ports almost as high as the exhaust ports and one with a symmetrical just in the like in the FOS uh, engine, symmetrical transfer and exhaust uh, layout and twin exhaust ducts with uh, rotary drum valves like these. And all the testing was done with uh, a roots blower. This one. Bunch of issues compounded by all the testing being done on an experimental dyno with a load cell connected directly to the pivoting engine. Lots of issues. We stopped doing this and started trying to supercharge the PIP engine, the one I've been working on now. <laughs> just <coughs> it's just been a weird line of events all the time here. The better read cages. This is promising. This is probably promising, but we I don't think I really tested this more than just like a quick run and then the the chain ceased immediately. Which it just needs a better chain because the chain the go-kart chain works fine at high RPM and stuff. So probably just the chain. 
or we could go belt drive which was my initial thing i can't remember why i didn't like continue on with the belt drive probably because i thought the belt would melt and it probably will but uh because these are the exhaust pipes rotary exhaust pipes there's huge potential here because there's a reason it's called the brute force concept that's because it's the point here is to circumvent all the finesse in a normal two-stroke engine. The point is to just like forcefully pump in a, like too much fresh mixture and forcefully dump out a bunch of that fresh mixture before the rotary valves close. So like no, no scavenging finesse, just brute force, fill the cylinder don't no concern about mixing with fresh or of mix uh, fresh and spent gases cause just pour through like purge the cylinder before the valves close and then with the reed valve design hopefully be able to build even more pressure after the that rotary exhaust valve is closed before the transfers close because they're high they're higher and here more area and not the exactly same thing but maybe better who knows I think for like getting results, getting something working and making more power than, uh, 50, than what you've seen from 50cc so far. I think this is uh, the approach uh, without like tens and tens of iterations of a uh, pretty conventional two-stroke design. I think this is the approach, for, at least for me, this is what I want to do now. And a big portion of why is because it really I, I can feel the I can feel the itch. I th don't think I mentioned the Rotrex. We're not going to use the ASIN. We're going to use the Rotrex blower. And the problem with all my testing with that blower was uh, how it's it's always been operate, operating in surge, like on the wrong side of the surge line. So we'll need to install a, a mass air fuel. No. Um, like an air sensor, like an um, airflow sensor, MAF, MAF sensor, I think they're called. And also a MAP sensor. And as this is, there's no pipe here and no, like, this will behave pretty much like a four stroke, just stroking twice the, or twice the bangs. Which means, and now people are, are applauding, we can go EFI pretty easily. Like a normal, uh, normal uh, blown uh, four-stroke E5 type would work here, and like I've got this setup, but uh, I don't think this is the way forward. I think uh, like mega squirt or something, micro squirt, and uh, injectors into the transfers to not have like a huge volume case volume full of uh, fuel that will. Uh, fall out of suspension and stuff so this is exciting before all that we're gonna make sure the dyno setup is working first this brake disc dyno and then the water brake that is in the making which will replace this and we're gonna do that by grafting a conventional 50 cc two-stroke cylinder like off the shelf cylinder onto this case grafting is a like mounting, <laughs> uh, which should be no problem because uh, there's such a long con rod here. So I, it should be easy to find something that will fit with a spacer and then just like a, an adapter plate for a different bolt, uh, a different bolt uh, circle, bolt hole location. And we'll use this not to test the engine because with a conventional two stroke cylinder on here, the case volume will definitely be within rotary valve range and then there's nothing special at all. So use that for testing. Testing and, uh, and con like uh, calibrating the dyno. Both this and the water brake. And then brute force engine. EFI, lots of sensors. Yeah. Thanks for watching.